Recently, I've been teaching myself metal casting. It's involved heating up the material in a small crucible in my Vivor blacksmithing forge and then pouring it out into a sand mold that I've prepared. So for example, right here are some brass starfish that I made. I also made a brass trigger guard for a flintlock pistol, which I think turned out pretty nice. And then for a little bit more complicated sand mold, I made a bronze spoon, uh, which was actually cast from a pewter spoon uh, made from a 300 year old mold. So I thought that was pretty cool. I wanted to make something a little fancier. This is a mid-century ceramic bowl that my wife had inherited from her mother, so I used it as a pattern in a sand mold so that I could create a permanent bronze version of it. So here is right after casting into the sand mold. And unfortunately, after opening the mold up and shaking the sand off of my casting, um, it was a failure. It just, I didn't have enough metal melted. Uh, it didn't fill the mold in, and as a casting, incomplete, it, just a failure. So this failed as a cast, but it's still pretty cool to see. Sounds good too if I tap it, rings like a bell. So it's back to the drawing board. The first thing I had to do was make a fresh sand mold. Then I took my casting, cut it into little pieces, uh, added some additional material, and remelted it down. Then it was time to recast. After letting it cool a bit, I flipped the mold over and took out the screws that held both halves of it together. First glance looked pretty good. And once I got the sand out of there, I could tell that it was at least a complete cast. I had the uh, right amount of molten bronze poured for this. After cooling it, I took it into the house to wash it off properly. Once I had the bowl scrubbed down, I could see there were some obvious voids, both on the inside and the outside of the bowl. Um, it was just not a perfect casting is all there was to it. Uh, you can also see there's a large uh, flashing on the edge of the bowl that I would need to grind off. I did take a measurement of the weight at this stage here. And the other thing is I wanted to polish it up. And fortunately, I was able to get it onto my wood lathe, which helped significantly with the polishing. And I think the interior just looks fantastic, all shined up like that. Uh, we lost about 50 grams uh, to the flashing and grinding. I wanted contrast for the outside, so I heated it up with a torch and applied liver of sulfur to darken it to give it this nice uh, blackish exterior. And ironically, I accidentally gave it this fantastic rainbow color on the inside from the heat treatment. Unfortunately, it was only on the surface and basically it would rub right back off, so I went back to the original shine. So this is what the completed bowl looks like. I think it's pretty cool that I was able to take a family heirloom and make something more out of it. Uh, just pretty cool that way. And also, it's got a great ring to it. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. Even though it's not a perfect casting, I mean, you can see all those imperfections right there in the casting. Uh, what's kind of neat about them is they actually provide a really neat contrast, especially in the interior of the bowl where it's all shined up. Those little voids have a very, very neat look to them. 
And then the shine on the inside also contrasts with the exterior of the bowl where I used that liver of sulfur uh, to darken it and then polish back the highlights with some uh, very fine steel wool. I hope you enjoy these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and check out all the other videos on this YouTube channel. Make sure to check out 300mpg.org for the related blog entry. And until next time, stay charged up!